Hi, I'm Marcel, and welcome joining me in Screaming Into the Void. I'm trying to read a book from each country of the world, and uh, the book I'm going to read now is Miguel Asturias, Mr. President. Asturias was a Guatemalan author. He won the Nobel Prize of Literature in 1967. And uh, the book, uh, Mr. President, is his most known book. <laughs> um, and it's about uh, living under a dictatorship. And I don't really know anything more about that, but that's what reading the book is for. I'm reading uh, Mr. President by Asturias. <laughs> I'm barely 10 pages in, but I need to talk about uh, the opening, which is probably going to make or break if you want to read uh, this book. Uh, Asturias was inspired by uh, the Surrealist movement in the 1920s. Um, so he went to Paris, that's where he started being interested in Guatemalan history. And that's also where he was influenced by the Surrealist movements in uh, 1920s, 1930s, 1940s. And uh, so he came back and a lot of his writing is inspired by Surrealism. Now, Surrealism as a writing genre, I'm not very familiar with. So when I, when I first read uh, the opening, I didn't know that it was um, Surrealism was inspired by Freud and his ideas of the conscious and subconscious. And what the Surrealists are trying to do is bring illogic ideas and merge them with logical ideas to create something that's over realism. That's what Surrealism is, over realism. So something that is more real because you are connecting with your subconscious. And the opening of this book is absolutely magnificent, I think. But I can also understand how that will absolutely... You'll be absolutely horrified by it. I started reading and the text is a word salad. I don't mean that it's um, sort of, it absolutely makes sense. It's not Dadaistic, so it's not like just words hither and thither. But there's so much details in uh, the sentences. I mean, the adjectives have adjectives. <laughs> and I, uh, so the book starts at this plaza where you have characters talking to one another and these characters are more archetypes so and you're talking about characters who are sort of very low on the social economic totem pole so you have the idiot and you have the beggar and you have the prostitute and they are in this plaza and just hurling insults at one another and he's describing the bells in the background and these people who are talking back and forth and when I started reading it I'm I I I, I became almost numb it became it, it was so much information that I couldn't really engage with the information but it's not sort of a passive numb so but it, it felt like I was sitting at the plaza and I was just observing 
everything in front of me, not being able to really engage with it, but just observing it and was like, okay, so that's how this book is going to be. And it was sort of so long sentences. And so it was so meaty descriptions it was too meaty descriptions. I couldn't take it in it. And then bam, a murder happens. <laughs> And, and the murder is described so concise and so precise and so short sentences. And I was like, what? <laughs> What's going on? Because I was sort of almost sort of lulled into this sort of long description. So, so I was shocked where, because very often sort of in modern media, we are used to the important things get the big descriptions and the unimportant things are there in the background and this opening flips that on its head where the sort of the important thing is short precise and sort of shocks you out of the sort of numbness that you have and i absolutely loved it but i can also imagine why you wouldn't love it <laughs> I just finished uh, Mr. President and <laughs> my husband commented that it's rarely I get this engaged with a book as I was. This book is so incredible um, and I think one of the things I really really like about the book is the use of the surrealistic theme to highlight the terror of living in a dictatorship. One thing that's very interesting was that he he doesn't really use a lot of the surrealistic techniques, writing techniques, when when he's talking about something serious, but he, he uses them very effectively when it's not so serious so you, for example have um so you have a scene with uh that's very based on the sort of very surrealistic aspect of it when i'm talking about surrealism i'm talking about associative writing i'm talking about uh, s symbolism that's not really about symbolism in and of itself because in surrealism it's more about what you read into the symbols rather than what the author reads into the symbols. But no matter how you really look at it, it you sort of have this very dense, complex writing. And I'm saying complex mostly because you're struggling to sort of what is happening. And then it stops and you have this horrible scene, mostly from the prison about how life is going extremely badly for someone. Surrealistic, new chapter, we're in a prison, a woman is being tortured, um, and she's being tortured with her, with her a newborn son screaming in the next room, uh, uh, screaming of hunger, and she is crying and crying and just saying, just do whatever you want me, please, please, just let me feed my son and it's not it's not grotesque it's not it, it, it's it's not grotesque at all it's just an absolutely horrible scene because that's a horrible thing to have happening to you and then so this happens and then the scene ends and then you have some very associative surrealistic writing on the other side and you're sort of dragged in and out and having emotional whiplash when you are reading a book the words and the text is like the building blocks of um of reality and what's fascinating with his use of the surrealistic uh, is that you you're starting to question reality you are sitting in these scenes and wondering what's going on 
what is true, what is not true, what what's really happening. And when you're talking about a society where truth is what someone says is true and you just go along with it because you have to go along with it because otherwise you or your loved one will die, those two elements fit extremely well. Extremely well. Um, there is a YouTuber who's done a very, very wonderful book review about this book. I'm going to leave the links down below. He talks about how Asturias isn't really read because people think of uh, him as a complex, difficult writer, which is true in, in one sense. Uh, surrealistic literature can be difficult to read because of the stylistic choices. But on the other hand, it's not, it's not that complex. He uses the surrealistic techniques to make you feel uneasy because living in a dictatorship makes you feel uneasy and the way he does it is absolutely brilliant and thank you for listening to me screaming into the void